Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So for about the last two and a half, close to three weeks, I haven't really done a lot of recording because I've just been stuck in track press build mode. I had that stuck in my brain and I had to get it out before I just couldn't stand it any longer. So the reason we built that, so I've got a better set of track links for 5G LM13 that have a lot more meat on them, but it takes a very specialized piece of equipment to press the links all well, disengage the links from the track pins and the bushings. Here's what they look like. That is a D2 pin. You can see the press fit area on each end of that. Here is the bushing that surrounds the pin. You can see the press fit areas on each side of that. So follow me out here. We've just about got it. Well, we basically got it all done. And I'll quickly walk you through well, the foundation, and then we will add piece by piece onto it and really explore the design. So we're centering it largely off of this heavy H beam. This stuff is 15 inches wide. We are 5 8 thick on the legs. We are 3 quarter thick on the web. Plenty of meat there, plenty of strength. And Senior picked up a whole bunch of these. Um, he probably got, oh, 50, 60 feet, maybe more of this stuff years and years and years ago at an auction when you're the only one crazy enough to bid on and load up and haul really ridiculously heavy looking things you can get some pretty good deals i mean he had we still got a bunch of this stuff he maybe paid 200 bucks for it but all back in the day i don't even want to know what this stuff costs now but it's really good for building well we've made several heavy tables out of this stuff that's what this whole table is but now we're building a track press out of it here's all the other pieces that go to it again based on the same h beam and then a whole lot of other things in between. So let's start putting all together. I think we can get a pretty good idea how all this is gonna work by the time we've got it set. All right, first piece to go on is this far end stop. Once again, made from the same H-beam. I've plated it with half inch plate steel on the front and we have support gusseted it on each side. secured by six one inch diameter grade eight bolts each side. These front two I had to run from the bottom up because after I put the gussets in, the, the bolt was just long enough the head wouldn't quite clear the bottom of that. So it's, it was just as easy to uh, take that up from the bottom. So with our backstop in place, we need to build a cradle and a support for the track chain. So we start with these two heavy blocks and what I did was drilled and threaded two holes in the base of each one for 5 8 by 11 bolts. They correspond with these holes there and there. So those get secured in place like that and now they are just like a backstop support for the actual cradle itself. That's what this is two inch thick plate steel and I have milled and cut a couple of u-shaped slots in it that are on center with the track pitch so the chains and the bushings will slide down into that and bottom of this I have drilled and threaded for three quarter by ten bolts so this will be well secured in place also those bolts line in with that hole and that hole and that is how they go up against the back stop, just like that. Next, we'll mount up the sliding portion of the table. As you can tell by all the grease that I've applied, this one needs to have a lot of slick. What we've got going on here, another piece of heavy two inch plate. I've drilled it in three locations across the bottom and I've ran grade eight, five eighths bolts all the way through, holds the two um, side halves of the uh, sliding portion to the heavy plate. We have a cutout right here for the, um, the ram piston to exert pressure upon the plate. I used up some of my three eighths plate steel scraps from the uh, D2 belly pan build and the front bumper side bracket build. For additional bracing there, they work just fine. Steel is expensive, so it's nice to use every bit that you've got. And yeah, we're gonna have to be putting plenty of grease on this. This whole table is gonna slide maybe an inch and a half, maximum two inches back and forth is about all the travel that it needs. But still, 
were mild steel on mild steel, so I've drilled and tapped for three grease fittings across the back, three across the front, and we have the other guide piece here for this other side. You can see the guide piece is in place right here. Clamps around the 5 8 um, leg of the H-beam. We have three 5 8 grade 8 bolts going through each half, and we have the uh, the guide plate, and there's all the clearance shims between the plate and the, uh, the bottom clamp portion. And I've also drilled, you can see grease cirque there, grease cirque there, two grease passages that will feed grease directly into the joint between the bottom plate, this guide plate, and the table, and the edge of the legs. So that just bolts on there, and what it does, it just it clamps around kind of in a, a C shape around the leg of that H beam makes for a decent guide, keeps everything centered, and hopefully all that grease will keep the sliding back and forth as this holds the push plate in alignment with all the pins and the bushings. Hopefully that makes sense. So with that much in place, it's time for the other end stop. Back stop, if you will. And construction of this is the same H-beam. We're doing the same series of six one-inch diameter grade eight bolts, securing it at the base. We have the same half-inch plate welded to the front. We have some gussets back there. And you can see two mounting holes drilled in the face. That is because that is the mounting point for the heart of the system. This is a 50-ton capacity three-inch stroke OTC hollow ram. These are super handy because they have these base plate adapters that thread into the base of the ram and then they hold your mounting bolts for putting it on whatever you need to secure it to. And here is the piston portion of it up here at the front. So instead of just using the face of the ram piston to do all the pressing against the heavy duty two inch block, well, all these are threaded inside for pulling adapters or even pushing adapters, so I made my own. This is inch and five eighths diameter by five and a half threads per inch, grade eight rod. And you can see it threads right in the end of that ram piston very nicely. So we'll top that off with the inch and five eighths by five and a half nut that will go on the threaded rod. I'm probably gonna need two hands to really get this all centered up well. There we've got them evened out. So. Hand tight is all you need. This is your wearable push point now so that you're not scarring up the top of the ram piston itself. Helps everything to live a lot longer. These are fairly expensive, so yeah, wearable items whenever possible. So we just slide the studs into the mounting holes on the backstop, secure with a nut on the back side. All right, just for a quick demonstration of how all this is going to actually interact with the track chains before I put the top piece on because we're about to make it a little difficult to see. So we have push adapters, all right? These are made from, well, what's in this bin right here. These are push adapters made by OTC for hollow rams. They're all different shapes and sizes. They all have one thing in common though. They're all on a one inch diameter shank and they have a heavy shoulder at the top of it. So what I did was drilled one inch diameter holes and milled nice flat faces in the front of that heavy two inch, inch plate. So the adapter slides in there for the bushing. Here's the one for the pin. Slides in right there. Now the cradle for the track links. We have just this short section right here. We just slide the track link into the cradle like that. And as the hollow ram pushes on the heavy two inch plate, it will run those adapters, the bushing adapter up to the bushing there, the pin adapter to the pin right there. And as it presses, this cradle will support this outer track link. And we're basically pressing the bushing and the pin out that way, leaving us with a detached track link that you can then take off by itself Withdraw this link with the bushing and the pin remaining out the other side. You can press the bushing and the pin out of that one later, but then what you do is advance with one hand, this is really fun, 
advance up to the next link, press that one off and just keep leapfrogging, so on and so forth until you've worked your way all the way down the chain. Simple as that, right? Okay, final main piece. I have this heavy T-channel. I want to use for a brace that goes across the top. Line some bolts up here, some holes I should say. And of course this is the piece we drilled in the last episode with the vintage Kennedy Auto Camelback drill press. Once again this is T-channel, 8 inches wide here, 6 inches tall up top. We are half inch thick on the bottom, 5 sixteenths along the leg. So. This was just kind of an additional piece I decided to have because I wanted rigidity with this. Those one inch bolts along the bottom should have been enough to keep either end from breaking loose. But to make sure nothing is gonna move and keep everything square, I wanted top support as well. So we did six three quarter inch diameter, grade eight bolts on each end, 12 total. And the reason we stick out further on the main H-beam as well as the top support at the back is because, well, I built this entire press to be six feet long total, even though I only needed, well, just short of five feet for doing these D2 tracks. But this gives me flexibility to alter the design if I have to, because I still have not put this to use to prove it out. And if also if I need to change dimension or maybe even try and fit a bigger track in here, I drilled all of these bolts on four inch centers. So I can just drill another bolt hole, couple bolt holes in the bottom, four inches back here, and another couple in the top, four inches back from our last one there. We can move this whole rear abutment piece back four inches at a time. You just keep drilling bolts or drilling holes until you get all the way out to the end. That gives you more flexibility to move this back piece, even in case I need to redesign a new push point here that's gonna give me more distance that's not a big deal. Ram travel's only three inches, but four inch spacing worked best for the real estate that I had to occupy. And if I need to uh, make up that last inch of discre discrepancy, I can make it up with my wearable push adapter on the end of the ram piston. So highly configurable here. And yeah, it's better to uh, have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So that is the assembly and walk around of the track press minus one additional piece I still needed this back brace to support the top of the cradle block back to the rear backstop. And I had a little bit of an end piece of scrap of that H beam left, so we just kind of uh, chopped a piece out of that, cleaned it up a little bit, flushed each edge so it's fitted well, nice flat surfaces, and a couple pieces of quarter inch scrap just spot welded to the top so it hangs on the front. And I've got a couple of half inch carriage bolts back here, jam nut on each side to basically be like some rear legs at the back. Sets it down nice and flat so that when we are putting the power to the track chains and, and putting all the tension onto the cradle block, something is going to be supporting it on top against that back brace. So just kind of, or that backstop makes it so that really nothing can move here at all. Everything is as supported as I can possibly make it. Looks kind of, well, scrappy, but it's all made out of scrap pieces. So we'll just have to see how it all works. Okay, we'll store our removable brace down there for now, seeing as how every time we position a link, we'll have to set that back in, press the pin in the bushing, take it out, remove the link, leapfrog the chain, set it back in again, repeat the process. That's just how track presses work. So 
that's a good place for that for now. So after action report here, I'm confident with the construction of all of this. I'm very confident that being boxed in like this, top and bottom, nothing's going to um, come detached. And I don't get nervous until we get to this sliding portion in the middle. I'm not sure how well we're going to keep sliding here, even with all my grease points. We're just gonna have to put it into practice and see. Uh, another potential weak point is the one inch diameter shanks that are on each one of these adapter pieces, even with the rather large shouldered area just beyond them. And I milled two absolutely flat recesses in there, so we have very, very good support. We're just gonna have to see what happens. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna overwork this two inch um, piece of steel with my um, um, pressure point from the ram in the center versus two other pressure points that are going to transfer the force slightly out from that. We're just going to have to start putting pressure on things and see how it's going to work. So yeah, it's a bit of a leap of faith to put two solid weeks plus into something with absolutely no assurances of whether or not it's going to work outside of it looks like it should and I, I believe it will. So the old saying diamonds are made under pressure. <laughs> Did we make a diamond or do I have a pile of fool's gold out there? I don't know, it's gonna be one of the two. So we're just gonna to have to crank up the pressure and then see how things work. I've got plenty of track chains prepped. I'm up to, I've got five chains. Um, I have the sixth chain I still need to remove track pads from. Again, heavy, dirty, smoky, sparky work. Big hammers, we'll get that one prepped. So two of the chains are pretty stand up. I believe they only need a pin and bushing turn and be put back together and they're gonna be good to go. The other four chains, one set has good pins and bushings. The other set has good links. If I press them both apart, take the good from each one, I'm hoping I can build one decent set of the two sets and have a whole lot of scrap left over. We'll see, we'll get the chains built for 1113 first and we'll see how that press is doing. If it seems like it still has some life left in it, we'll go from there, but we're not gonna be able to have, we're not gonna have time to try it out today. It's getting rather late and uh, yeah, I wanna get that six chain prep before I start with this. So. Tune in next time. We'll see if that thing's gonna do its job. Thanks again for watching everyone. Hope to see you back.